there is a strap on every bus that should be replaced right away and that's the strap that goes on the back door this is the strap that actually stops the door from swinging when it's open these things get weathered and over time they get really stretched out and uh, might allow your door to swing too far as you're starting to see in that bottom corner um, it didn't turn out well for us so join us on today's episode where I take care of a problem at the back of the bus that I caused because I didn't replace the strap get to do some welding and a little bit of body filling and I'm working on that project Tracy has room project today which may be helpful to some of you yeah I'm taking windows out cleaning them up priming them and painting them and putting them back in and she fixed the latches in another window today yes. so if you didn't see how to repair the latches that's in the last video catch it do us a favor though hit the subscribe button we need subscribers. We're 6,000 hours of view time, and we need about 400 more subscribers. So help us out. Hit the subscribe button, and uh, if you like the content, hit the bell for notification. If not, just subscribe and, and watch what you want to watch. Yep. So join us today. Here we go. What happened to the window? Well that's kind of what today's episode is going to be about the uh, strap that everyone should replace um, i'll explain more about this later but it turns out that if this strap is not tight and the wind catches your door it will go right around and catch the tail lights and you end up with the glass this way lucky for us our plan was to take this window out anyway because that's going to be the lower part of the garage in there under the bed and we really don't want to uh, advertise all of our batteries and solar so we were going to weld a panel over this we're just moving this up an extra day or two in project so my job today is going to be to get this out cut a piece of steel and weld it in here eventually put body filler around it and prime this and uh, no more window so if you're keeping that window replace the strap i showed you a little bit ago Good morning. Today um, I'm working on um, taking the windows out and cleaning windows and painting the frames. Uh, they're aluminum and I'm going to replace all the hardware as I started on one window and showed you how to do that uh, last week. But I've got enough to replace all of them in the bus now. So, but I don't want to put them all back together until I have everything done. I'm going to start out using a primer for aluminum. You can use self-etching or I bought Rust-Oleum uh, for aluminum. Um, if you don't get them, again, I'm using a Rust-Oleum Instagram, Kells and Jay, crossing fingers. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I'm using a latex aluminum primer uh, to uh, prime the windows before I paint them. We're painting them a matte black. Um, this is uh, flat. Uh, we decided we want a flat paint, not shiny. I bought two different products to clean the inside of the windows, Neverdoll and Brasso. Neverdoll is good to use on easy dirt and grime the brasso kicks butt as you saw last week i bought a whole package of the window actuators latches but this time i also bought springs for any springs that are weak uh, so we can replace those also brushes to scrub with. When I go to put the windows back in, I'm using butyl tape. I uh, found this at Home Depot in the gutter section. It's a little hard to find, but it's a big roll. We bought three of them. This is what I'm going to seal the windows back with when I put them back in. And finally, once I, if I have time today, after getting the latches replaced, after painting and priming the windows, we're going to try our hand at 
putting window film tint on the windows. We're going 20%. While I'm doing this today, Rob's working on a different project, and so I'm on my own. I'm so low today with all of these windows. Check with, check, we'll check back with you as soon as I get a window out. Step one, take the glass out of the hole the rest of the glass. Try not to get cut. Just peel your seal out. And we're pretty much free of the glass. We'll get a vacuum and get that cleaned up. Now, the trick is going to be cutting a piece of plate that fits in here that I can weld all the way around. Another interesting thing that I see um, mentioned in, in some of the groups on Facebook and Instagram and all that is that you've got glass that's broken. Um, where are you going to buy that glass? Safe Light and some of the national brands aren't going to deal with it, but we have a local glass company here, and I'll, I'll give them a shout out. It's Ryan's Auto Glass here in Brunswick County. And we talked to Ryan the other day, and he said, oh, heck, it doesn't matter. He'll just cut a piece of glass that goes in the hole and put it in there. So a window this size, the upper window, uh, the wheelchair lift window has got a crack in it. $110, he'll cut the glass and put it in the bus. Uh, if we need to do the windshields, we got two flat windshields. Um, they're getting foggy along the edges. So we talked to him about that. He said, yeah, 110 bucks a piece. So he'll cut the glass, he'll put a new seal in it, and put the window in. So that's something to keep in mind. So let's get a measurement on this and let's get some steel cut and uh, get ready to weld for today. Everything scraped off, got a handful of crap. Um, now I'm gonna go inside the bus and start on the window. Okay, not only did I scrape the bugle, butyl tape off of the outside of the bus window where the frame, um, I also have to scrape all of this off the window itself uh, and get this nice and clean all the way around it. Um, I'm gonna clean this window. I'm going to degrease this window, I'm going to prime this window frame, and I'm going to paint it matte black. There's a lot of black, nasty stuff all over the window. We need to degrease it and get it off there. about dirt. Gross. All right, I got the whole window frame wiped down uh, with degreaser. My next step is I'm going to use Brasso, go over the whole thing. Then I'm going to tape off the window and I should be ready to prime. So let's do it. That's nasty. Even though it's been washed, now I'm just working all the ground, stuck on the ground off. This may take a while. And I've got mm, 18 windows to do. This, this is going to be a chore for a couple weeks, I think. See that? It just keeps coming off because this is corrosion. It's been on here for years. Out here on the trailer, I've got a piece of 16 gauge steel. That's a four by eight sheet that has gone up 156% like lumber has. Um, this sheet was $85. Wanted to get 18 gauge, but nobody had 18 gauge. It was either 22 or it was 16. So all we need to do is just mark it for the cut we're gonna make. So 17 and a half.
we've got our piece of metal cut and uh, we have a corner hinge here that the steel would hang over so I took a quick measurement of that and cut an angle into the corner of the steel now the one thing you want to remember when you're working with metal and welding is that magnets come in really handy so if we place this really strong magnet here then we can set our piece of steel on that as a shelf to hold it while we check and make sure now I put some marks on here an inch all the way around so that I know when my metal was close to the right just add a little bit Got a nice even top on it we need to come over this way so there I'm, I'm hitting both my one inch marks some magnets in the top to keep the top from flopping down and we're kind of there angles cut here so that we can get around that hinge next step is going to be to take some sandpaper on the grinder and uh, clean all of this paint off because you can't weld where there's paint and then i'll make sure this little surface rust on that top edge is off of there then we'll hold everything into place and we'll get a tack in a few places around it to hold it and then we're ready to start welding this piece of metal in and get it completely secured There you have it. You got one side welded. We'll come over and weld this other side. And uh, I don't know why the door's smoking inside, but we'll have to figure that out too. Now I have the window frame clean. Look how shiny. Um, I'm going to wipe it down with prep saw to get all the grease off of it and let it dry while I tape up the windows and then I'm going to use the primer. So it may take a while. What I'm doing now is taping up the window. I've already prep sold the window. Now I'm putting the tape on so I don't get paint all over the glass. I believe it's clean. It's grease free, oil free. So as soon as I get this taped up, I'm going to go ahead and apply the primer and let it dry. And then go ahead and start painting our black. There's two parts of this video that just aren't going to show up today. One was taking a welder and filling a hole that was burnt through the metal. And the second is mixing and applying the Bondo or body filler. Both times when the video ended and after uh, I got done recording, it said not saved to storage. So it was an internal camera problem. So sorry but not gonna be able to have those so now we've got the body filler in we're gonna start the sanding process get the second coat there's one coat at the bottom two on either side and we're gonna start sanding it in so that we can get ready to primer the bus um, probably be some little touch-ups that we have to do but this is completely waterproof now I probably won't get done with everything today and get it primered, but at least I'll get a lot of the sanding done and have it ready for spot putty because it's getting short in the day now. So let's get sanding and start working this out. We're starting out with an 80 grit sandpaper and we'll cut it down with 80 
and then we'll go to a 120 or I mean I'm sorry yeah we'll go to a 100 and then a 120 and then a 200 a 220 and a 300 to finish because you want a really smooth finish where you have your body filler Be very careful when you're sanding with the rough sandpaper that you don't take too much out. Um, this being a bus, we're not going to have to finish it quite like a 57 Chevy, but we still want to have a nice transition over so that we don't have a real rough edge. So as the metal sticks up, you know, it's 16 gauge, so it sticks up, you just kind of roll everything over with the body. I'm feeling pretty good. We'll, uh, We'll sand this other side down and then we'll get a finer sandpaper. You can see Tracy got the, uh, the two windows. She got the latches fixed in both of them. She used the aluminum primer. Um, it's it's self-etching basically because aluminum won't hold paint or primer. It'll peel. Um, but if you use a self-etching primer or a primer made for aluminum, it turns out looking pretty daggone good. She didn't have time today to get the uh, black paint on them because we're just running out of daylight it's been a cool day it's been 59 degrees instead of the normal 95 here um, so she's not going to be able to get black paint on them but we'll just go ahead and keep taking them out over the course of the week and evenings and fixing latches and doing primer on them but we got some window deletes coming up so that's the end of her project um, hope this all helped you somehow we'll uh, catch you on the next episode